Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to our uh, first session in project management on setup for SAGE 300 CRE. Uh, my name is Jeanette, and I will be your, your guide this morning <clears throat> for the next hour. Before we get started, I want to remind everybody that in the handout section on the GoToMeeting or GoToWebinar panel, there are two documents. Uh, one is a PDF of the material that we will be covering today, and the second one is the actual PowerPoint that we're going to be going through. Um, if you want to go ahead and get the, the PDF file either open or printed out so that you can take notes, it'll, it's going to follow along pretty closely to what we're going to be talking about this morning. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, our agenda for today, we're going to cover some features in project management. We're also going to review some terminology that we'll be using as we go through some of the, uh, the setup areas. Uh, we'll talk about getting started with project management, and these are some of the areas that we are going to go into um, uh, this morning as far as settings and address book and, um, and setting up jobs within project management. Um, and then how it, that interfaces uh, back to the actual job cost module. All right, so let's start with features. This is on page one of the, the PDF file. So project management is basically a tracking uh, application for you to be able to create and track documents that are pretty common in project management, such as the submittals, transmittals, RFIs, change orders, um, we also have meeting minutes. So we can create and track and distribute meeting minutes uh, either with your customers um, or even internally uh, with, with different departments or individuals in your own organization. This is a great way to keep track of those meetings, what was discussed, and any decisions that were made. So you have that uh, documented. On any of these um, documents, we can print them out, we can save them to files, uh, we can email them. Um, so you have a way of, of storing or keeping that information electronically on your system. Uh, we also have a drawings area. So you can uh, enter, have someone come in maybe and set up an, a, an initial set of drawings that you can then go in and track any revisions that are made to those drawings. You can attach those drawings um, if you have them electronically stored on your on your system, you can attach them to the drawing setup area, and then you can you know attach those to any of the other documents that you are uh, sending out. We also have a correspondence log. Uh, we'll actually be looking more in depth at that uh, next week in our second session on change management. Uh, the correspondence log uh, is a nice feature that allows you to pull emails into the, the, the PJ application. Uh, you can even open up the emails that you've saved within the correspondence log from within project management. Um, so this is a good way, uh, to again, to have electronic track of uh, e emails, even documents, uh, Excel files, Word documents, you know, anything that you need to, to keep track of with regards to, this, to, to the project. If you need more than that, we have custom logs that you can create. The system does come with, with uh, I think there's about five of them that are already set up for you. Uh, these were put in place prior to the field reports, uh, and we, which are, again, we're going to be looking at next week in the change management session. Um, so this is, again, we're giving you an extra option beyond the correspondence log and the field reports to track um, different information again, about the projects. Um, within project management, we can create, once we're all set up, we can use PJ to create contracts, uh, subcontracts, which Sage calls commitments. So these can be, um, they could, these could actually be purchase orders as well, or subcontracts. Uh, we can enter change requests that eventually can be turned into a change order. Um, or you can go directly to a change order if you, if you don't need to go through that, that initial step of creating a change request. Uh, 
it's not that's not mandatory. Uh, once those those items are created, you you can create them within PJ. Then you can release uh, the the information to accounting, which means when we say release to accounting from inside project management, what we're saying is send this to the JC or job cost application. We have access to, from it, within PJ, based on your security, uh, you have access to all your contracts, whether they're owner contracts or subcontracts, uh, the estimates, uh, forecasting, change orders, and cost. All of the PJ reports and inquiries uh, where, where they need access to job cost, SAGE will have built that in so that you can look at information either in a report or an inquiry and get information out of job cost. Now, as far as setting up the jobs, we're going to look at this today. You can actually create your jobs within project management, and until you're ready to um, set it up as an actual job, it can stay in PJ, and you can track uh, documents. And then when you're ready, uh, once maybe once the, once the job is accepted, then you can release it to accounting. Um, and you can even, at that point, change the, the job number. So I will uh, I'll, I'll show you that as well once we get into the get into the software. Um, secure job information. I'm going to show you the difference between PJ uh, job a PJ job and a job cost job. Uh, even though they, sh they they do share the same ID, they share some of the static information. They don't share dollar amount figures. So when we say secure job information, what we're saying there is that you can, with Sage Security, you can limit what the project managers can see, which projects they can see, uh, and what information, again, out of job costs they can see. So there's, there, is, there are ways within uh, the, the Sage Security to secure that information. All right, terminology. For those of you that are new to project management, you'll hear uh, me talk about these some of these items uh, as we go through the setup. And then next week in our uh, change management session, we'll be looking actually at all of these um, types of documents. So the transmittal is it's basically a cover sheet. Um, so when we when we talk about that, uh, you can create a transmittal uh, to send a do out a document with with an email, and all that's in there is the transmittal, and it may be information that you are sending to uh, several um, individuals on the project or within the company. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a cover sheet, but that's usually what it's used for. Um, the submittal is where you're sending or so you're sending something out to be approved, uh, and it could be, you know, a drawing. It could be a um, material, maybe you're sending something out from a vendor to the owner for them to approve. Um, and so this is a document then that you can print out and send along with that item. Uh, and then once you receive the document back, whether it's approved or not, then you can mark that inside the, uh, the submittal record itself. So again, you can are, are electronically keeping track of um, things that are going in and out of the office for approval uh, or even within the office for approval. The RFI, the request for information, this is where you're sending out a form that has questions, um, maybe to the owner of the project or maybe to uh, another person within your organization that's working on the same project. And again, once you send it out, uh, there's a there is a copy of it within the system, and then we can pull that copy of the, rec the request back up, um, and we can put the answers in that we received back from, from whoever we sent the request to. Meeting minutes are the other document, and again, th these are gr this is a great thing to, to use when you're meeting with the owner of the project or with other individuals with, even within your company, where you can set up an agenda. Uh, you can then come back later, put notes into those items on the agenda, and you can even uh, create new meetings based off of old meetings that where you didn't complete all of the, uh, the items on the agenda. 
Now, all four of these I'm going to um, demonstrate to you next week in our uh, change management, or actually our documents, excuse me, our documents uh, session. We will be going through each of these four um, types. And actually, the correspondence log, I may have said it, uh, used the wrong <laughs> session name. It's, it's PJ documents that we're going to be doing next week. Um, and that's going to cover all the, all the, the forms and the, um, the correspondence logs, custom logs. All right, so here's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, the path to getting started with project management. We're going to go in and take a look at PJ settings first. Um, and it, it's a very simple settings, um, not, not all that much to it, not very complicated. Uh, then we're going to take a look at some custom description um, areas that you might want to go in and, and customize for, for your company. And I've got some, uh, in the documentation, I've got some fields highlighted for you so you know what, which ones to take a look at. We're going to take a look at setting up companies in address book and contacts. Uh, the jobs inside PJ have access to address book and it would you know, it, it, it's going to be a benefit to you to create those companies and individuals within those companies for when you start creating your documents so that you can um, easily find the people that you need to email. Awesome. We're also going to take a look at set up jobs uh, and I'm going to compare the difference uh, for you between the job once it's created in project management and then released to accounting. We'll take a look at the job record once it gets once it gets set up over in job cost. Now you will have once you've got project management activated, the system will automatically create a brand new job if you create the job in job cost first. And we'll talk about this again when we get into the software. The difference is if you create it in job cost first, it automatically gets created in PJ. If you create it in PJ first, you have to answer the question about releasing it to accounting before it gets set up in job cost. So it's, it's, it's a one way street if you're in job cost, but it's not if you're in PJ. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not automatic. Now once we get through all of the setup, then that's going to help us with our next session, the document session, for us to be able to create all of these uh, documents, the submittals, the RFIs, the transmittals, uh, meeting minutes. It's going to help us with the correspondence log, and it's going to help us with creating uh, a drawing log. Uh, we also have a spec session, section that we're going to take a look at too today. Um, and then additionally, any new custom logs that we might need. So once we're able to move around in PJ, we'll be able to see what extra types of things we need to activate and, and populate in order for project management to, to work for us. And then once that happens, uh, you're going to be able to you know, do a lot of your work directly in project management. So once we have those jobs created in PJ, um, we're able to even enter estimates through PJ and commitments, which would be your subcontracts. We can do change requests. We can do commitment change orders and change orders. So there will be a connection there between project management and job cost. And some of these programs like estimates commit and commitments, those top two and commitment change orders, actually those three, actually pull the task um, out of job cost. So when you're looking at the screen in PJ, if you look at the same screen in job cost, they're identical because PJ is, has, a, has a connection or an interface with job cost. The ones that are unique to project management will be change requests and ch uh, change orders. Those will be um, uh, have a unique look and feel uh, that is different from job cost. All right, so I think now we're ready to go ahead and jump into the software. So I'm going to pull us over into project management. Okay. So 
So this is starting on page two um, in your uh, PDF handout. So under uh, File, Company Settings, PJ Settings, or if you're doing this from the desktop, you can actually just click on Project Management and you'll see a, 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 a kind of a, a section pop up there that will show you all of these. I'm going to just run these directly from inside Project Management instead of from the desktop. But there, there are two ways that you can do this, okay? All right. Once I pulled up um, PJ settings, the first tab under general, where it says use last job, <clears throat> you want to check this. If you're going to be doing a lot of things for the same job uh, in a session, or if you're going to go, be going in and out of project management into the same uh, project, the majority of the time. What this does is it allows the system to pre-fill that last job number that you were using onto whatever task it is you're running. So it's kind of a, a kind of a shortcut or a help uh, for you that, so that you're not always having to enter the same job number. It'll just pop it in there for you automatically. The allow limited entry of contract amounts in inter miscellaneous worksheets in project management what this means is that it's only going to let the, P the project managers enter contract amounts, not any of the other miscellaneous worksheet um, uh, type entries. This is for um, the, the miscellaneous worksheet contract amounts would be for quick bill jobs. So if you're wanting to do work on jobs in project management that, are, that do not have a contract uh, a C within CN, they're quick bill. Uh, easy jobs, but you want the, the PM to be able to set up the contract amount with the miscellaneous worksheet, then you can check this box and that's all they can do. Otherwise, leave it unchecked and the project manager can then see all the miscellaneous worksheets within project management. The bottom two check marks, I would go ahead and mark if they're not already marked on your system. Include attachments with documents. So it will automatically pull the attachments in and, and set them up uh, to, to send out in an email. And the same with document attachments on transmittals. So I would go ahead and check both those boxes. Right, on the document forms tab, uh, these are the crystal reports. These are the standard ones that come with SAGE. So um, if you do create or make a copy of the standard one make, to make modifications. Make sure that you come in here and lock that in. Use the Browse button here at the, at the end of the field and browse out to wherever you have saved um, that new design. All right, change management. Again, these are crystal forms here at the top. And, and again, if you, want, if you make a change, um, you've got a new design that you're using that has a different name. Make sure that you come in here and uh, change the uh, report design. Again, use the button, the Browse button at the end. If you're going to be doing uh, commitment change orders inside project management and you want it to automatically assign the item number, put, go ahead and put a check mark here. If you are using the, you know, uh, the maybe the standard categories or if you have specific categories for each of the six accumulation types, you can go ahead and lock those in here so they get locked in then when you're in um, doing the change request or the change order. The last tab is for field reports and these will be defaulted to give you access to all of the ones that come with, um, that come with the software. So if any of these you don't need to keep track of and you don't want to see a tab for that, when, you're, when you go into field reports, you can uncheck any of these um, and they will not show up then when you go into uh, field reports. All right, All right. Um, custom descriptions on page four in your handout. There are a couple that you might want to um, Uh, make changes to. So custom 
descriptions is where you, you come in to change those titles or address those drop downs. So if you come in here under, again, under company settings, under file, and go to custom descriptions, The fields are listed in alphabetical order by application, and so you might want to come in and change, let's see, uh, I've highlighted a couple of the PJ ones, let's see, actually that first screen is just gets you in, if you go down to the PJ fields, you'll be able to see descriptions. And then the ones that have, where they have custom lists on the side, where they've got a drop down, if you click into that field, and let me get down to, let's see, we added a whole bunch of stuff in here, maybe even this. If you just click into either the description of that field or onto the uh, drop down itself, you can uh, click on customize list, and that will take you in, and you can add to it, change it delete stuff out, um, whatever you need to do. And some of these that might um, come in handy is uh, maybe we've got, let me get down to the meeting type here. Let's see if I can get down there. We added a whole bunch of field report fields. Let's get down a little farther, meeting type. Here we go. So if we click in here and customize this list, the list may not um, be the exactly the type. You know, these are defaults from Sage, so you may have different types of meetings that you want to maybe even hold within your company. So you can come in and, and make changes to any of these, change the description, delete it out, add new ones in, and you can even change which one comes up first or uh, is the, def the default when you pull, go into that program. Okay, one thing I was try to have people do when they're initially setting up Sage because the email options are not only available in project management. They're also available uh, in other you know, applications. Uh, it, some of the, or all the reports actually, you're able to use the email option to send a report that you're running in Sage out to somebody uh, or to somebody within your company. Um, one thing you want to do is come in under Send Settings and you want to give, you know, set yourself up here. Now we're going to go to company setup here first, and I'll demonstrate this. But what you want to do is put, set yourself up on your on your machine as the default sender, so that when you send an email out, it will populate you as the sender on the on the send screen for emailing, and then you don't have to remember to put yourself in there at um, at the time or you might even forget to put yourself in there. And a lot of people will not open an email if they don't know who the email came from. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll, co we'll come back to the screen in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and go to um, Setup. And we're going to talk about these areas down below here first, and then we'll come back to Setup Job. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Setup Company first. This has a little bit of a different, kind of a different look and feel to it. Actually, let me back so I can see my buttons on the side here. All right, so we've got a, co a company name. So I'm going to go ahead and set myself up here as a company and my location. I can put that in. This is, again, for... for reporting purposes. These drop downs, again, this is again where um, you might want to go in and use custom descriptions to add more to, maybe you've got regions that you want to run company lists by. 
Uh, this can be used for, a, for reporting purposes for conditioning or for sorting. Same with type. Uh, this is another field that can be modified with, with custom descriptions. subcontractor. Um, this sort as, it's going to take the company name that you enter up here at the top and it's going to pre-fill it down here at the bottom. Uh, address, you've got multiple address fields that you can uh, deal with. By clicking the drop-down arrow here, you can, uh, you can um, it, it defaults to street. So see over here ab above the address button it says street. If I change it to remittance, you see up here it changes the, the description. Now when you, um, when you set up customers and vendors, if you've got address book, um, well you do have address book on your system, it will automatically, if you set the information up in AR or AP, it will create company records for those vendors or customers within address book. And it will pull the default as street for the customer, but for accounts payable, it's going to pull remittance. So any address that you put in over an AP is going to come across to the, re the remittance um, record in address book. So I'm going to leave this at street. I click the address button, and this is where I get the, uh, the address fields. Okay, that, and then I can see that populate in the window. You've got phone number fields. The primary is the default. You've also got two, uh, or excuse me, uh, a fax number, which actually is down below here. Uh, but you've got three other company phone numbers that you can, um, you can actually change the descriptions of these fields in custom descriptions, and you can toggle just by using the drop down to put the phone number in. Same with the fax. Or, or you could change the name of this and this doesn't have to be a fax number, you could, it could be something else. Right. Then here under trade, this is another reporting field. And again, it's controlled, the, the, the values in this box are controlled by custom description. Email address goes here for the company. Send via, I would probably change this to e default to email. And then down below, we've got some fields down below. This is where we set up the contacts um, for this company. So maybe my primary contact. I'm going to go ahead and use the buttons because this is a brand new setup here. I need to set these people up. So I have two choices on how to do it. I can save and close out of here and go to set up person, or I can use the little button right next to the field, which also takes me to person setup. So I can lock in a primary contact just by clicking here, and yes. And then I can put in the name. It already pre-fills with the company that I'm in. And then it pulls in a sort as. Now, what I may do, and, re and I would recommend you do as well, is this sort as defaults to the full name that's entered in here. But I may want to change that and put last name first. Because you, usually that's what you're looking for, is their last name. And so when we do a list, I want to see the, it, it pull them down by last name first. The address information is pulled over, um, again, from the company. And I can uh, put more phone numbers in here if I need to. It didn't bring over the email address, so I do need to lock that in. And then it also did not pre-fill with the send via, so I'm going to change that to email. And when I save, 
it pulls me back into the grid here. Not only, I, I'm locked in as the primary, and it also pulls me down here into the grid. So for, for the vendors that you're dealing with and the owners of the projects or, or project and then the individuals within your company that are going to be working on the job, you need to have these individuals set up within address book. Uh, and I would make sure that first you have a company record set up and then you go in underneath there and either add them down here on this grid. You, can, you don't have to set them up as one of your uh, top contacts up here, these four. You can actually come down here, and if you just click on the grid, you can add them here. So it doesn't, they don't have to be one of these four. You're not limited to those four um, contact types. Just pull them in down here. Okay. And lastly, we have some, um, again, for reporting, these are different types of organizations. I think this is minorities, this is veterans, this yeah. is women. I'm not sure what the other two are. But again, this is for reporting purposes. If you need to provide some type of report to show the, the uh, types of business, businesses that you are interacting with, um, this is how you would do it. And then additionally, we have some miscellaneous codes down here. You can change these descriptions with custom descriptions. They can be whatever you want, and they're, ju they're just text fields. Uh, and again, for reporting purposes. All right, so once the company has been set up, I'm going to go ahead and save that, and then I'm going to close. Then I would come back, once you've got your company created and you've got the individuals, the project managers set up, then they're going to want to come back under File, Send Settings, and they're going to want to lock themselves in. So this is why I, I did the last name first thing, so I'll go down to the E's here, Find Myself, pull myself in, and then OK that. All right, the next step that we're going to take a look at, I'm going to do the standard spec section first before we go to the jobs. Okay. The, there is a um, default that comes with the software. This is not in your um, handout. But you can um, pull these different spec sections um, onto the job when you set them up. Yeah, and great. you can create new uh, uh, items that you want to store in here. Okay. Now, these are simply for reporting purposes or for tracking purposes on the project. So once you start um, pulling in, setting these, these documents up, you may want to assign, you know, maybe there's a question on a specific spec right. section. And so that's where, um, where this can come in handy. So let's come back up here now to job. Let me see here. Okay. Now, the job number inside project management has the same format as the job number in job cost. So it's the same uh, structure. So the structure in the sample data is year job number. So I'm going to start a job that's for, for 2019, um, and it's job number one. All right. If this format doesn't match what you have set up for job cost, it's, it's going to tell you. Uh, it's just like the other applications that have a structure. And I'm going to call this uh, class job. All right. And then I enter to get down out of the top part of the screen. And under this general stab, uh, tab, you'll see we have a status. These are the same statuses that you see in job cost. So it defaults to unstarted, which is what job cost does. So we're going to leave it that way. 
this field will actually change as you start posting costs to the job. It will change the status within project management uh, to in progress. Mm -hmm. Now, until we start um, until we start having costs against this job, we can leave it here in project management. But then once costs start coming in, we're going to have to create the JC job. Right. So you can track maybe jobs that are in the estimate process. But if you want to track the estimate on that job, you're going to have to send it uh, over to release it to accounting, which is this, which is this checkbox right here. Unfortunately, we can't track dollar amounts of any type on a job within project management. There's no, there are no fields for it. All of those fields are over in job cost. So you have to activate that job, even though you have maybe you haven't uh, gotten the bid on that job yet. You haven't, um, you haven't won it yet. You still have to create a job over in job cost. All right, the type again. This is um, you can change the description of these if you want. Uh, whatever we type into these fields over to job cost when we when we send the job over. The dates down below. Again, they also go over to uh, job cost, and so we could give it a start date, and maybe we think, when do we think it's going to finish? This is, this is the estimate, so I can say, well, it's going to finish by tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to create, notice this, a duration. So again, this is something different. This duration is not stored in job cost. It's in project management. So you could do reports if you wanted to see know how long the, the estimators think it's going to take to do the job um, you, the system will calculate that for you and then if you need to revise it you can and then what's the actual so maybe we did start today but we're not going to finish until next week so now it's it's showing us here that it actually took us seven days so we can run reports then to show that that variation okay under site Contacts. Uh, this could be the address of the of the project, and this will um, actually go over to job cost once we send it over to job cost. And we'll just go ahead and fill this in because I'm going to show you once we do once we do the send that it, that it does it. We'll do the phone number. That's going to go over as well. And then here's the benefit of getting all of our stuff set up in address book first. The job contacts area. We can uh, put our cursor down here in the grid, and then we can either use the drop down to get a company list. Um, actually, this is company in person. Or we can use the binoculars, and we can, we can customize it. So here it's showing us the, the persons that we've set up. If we want to see the companies, we can change the list. So the drop down gives us gives us both, the drop down area, whereas the binoculars allows us to kind of fo focus in on the, the individuals that we need to pull in. Okay. And then it pulls in uh, their information. And we can add, whoop, oh, I don't want to save that. I want to, oh, yeah, okay, fine. And then maybe I want to pull in some other individuals. Go a little faster here. Let's pull Steve in there. Now, the other thing noticing here is I don't see our email. So I'm right clicking up here in one of these column headings and I'm going to go to hide show columns. I don't see email address. So email address actually does not show up here um, in the con of the job contact list. But it will show up when you go to um, 
uh, do the email, you'll see, actually see it there. All right, so you're going to build a contact list for the, the overall project. And then down below, we have this button called distribution list, where we can very specifically create lists. Uh, to, uh, again, this is going to help us out with the documents when we go to do um, emails. So maybe I'm going to call this one, and I'm not going to I'll just do it by job here. And I'm going to call this um, vendors. And let me save it. And I'm going to then select members. Now it, it automatically defaults to the job contact list, which I can go ahead and you know move people over. I can also come down to the let's see to the company view, and I can pull those these guys in. So there may be times when I want to send an email to all the vendors that are uh, working on this particular project. So I can create a list for that so that when I'm doing a, um, a document uh, or an email that I need to send out, I don't have to scroll through the company list and pick and choose these people. They're already grouped together for me in a distribution list. So I can save that. And I'll demonstrate this for you when we get into um, the documents next week. That this is going to this is going to save you a lot of time. If you've got a large list of of companies and a person set up with an address book, and you're spending a lot of time trying to isolate those people onto the documents, this is going to save you time by grouping them together. Um, you can group them either way or both. So you can take advantage of of the job contact area as well as the distribution list. The distribution list could just be employees within your company working on that project. That's another way, uh, that would be another example of a distribution list within, um, within a project. All right, spec sections. So if you go to select standard spec sections, this pulls up the list that we just looked at a few minutes ago under setup. And from here, you can pick and choose the ones that you want. And I'm holding the control key down on my keyboard in order to pick and choose. Or you can you know, give it a start, like right here, and then do a shift and, block, and pull in a block. Click OK, and it pulls them into the, to the project, uh, within project management. And so that when we're in doing our documents, next week, we'll be able to, to go into the spec section field, do a list, and it's just going to show us the, these, the ones that we've assigned to this job. And then we can add that to our document. All right, on the scope tab, you can put in um, information about this project. Um, you can also, down here, you can um, fill in some defaults for the submittals and the RFIs. So maybe we're not doing submittals all that much, but if we do, want, do we might want to send those submittals to me. All right, and then if we're doing RFIs, maybe I'm going to say I'm going to give them three days to respond. And this RFI is going to go to maybe the owner of the project. So whoever that might be, we'll lock them in here. And then this will pre-fill when we do our documents next week. These values are going to pre-fill when we go in to do the setup of, the, of those documents. On the change management tab, you can uh, say who to send the request to. And again, this is going to default on the form. And then if we have any additional um, markups 
add-ons or taxes, we can actually lock those in. If we know that they're going to be the same every time, you can actually lock that in, and then it's going to pull that in and, and set it up on the change request or the change order. So we could do this. This is a test percent. Now the types, we have a percent or an, a flat amount, or we can trigger a subtotal. So here I can say, well, we're going to do a, a 5%. And let's see, we're going to put it, we're going to leave, I think we can leave the cost. This is going to be done on the overall um, change order for the contract. Okay. And then maybe down here, we're going to do a flat amount. This is a test amount. And we're going to do it, uh, we might have a cost code for that. Put it under allowances, and we're going to put it to other category. And the amount that we're going to put on there is maybe $150. Okay. So this is what's this will we'll test this next week when we um, take yes. a look. Uh, we're going to look briefly at a change order uh, next week under documents, and you'll see that these get pulled in. These are going to get pulled in when I go in and set up the details on, a, uh, on an estimate and a price change. All right, then who does this go to? We're going to send it to our owner. And who is it always going to come from? I might be the person that always sends it out. Again, these are defaults that we can use um, to fill in that portion of the change, uh, the, ch the change request or the change order. And then lastly, we have custom fields. So if we have any custom fields set up on the PJ job, this is where they will be displayed. All right. All right, so back under general, when I'm ready to send this job uh, over to job cost, and let me show you here. I'm going to go ahead and open up job cost show you that this job does not exist. So, yep, yep. 15, 315 um, is the last one there. So let me close out of there. I'm going to go ahead, <clears throat> save the job again, and then I can check the box to uh, create it in job cost. Now notice the job number here is grayed out. I can't change that um, once I click that, that checkbox. I can change the description and I can change some of this information uh, that it pops in. Uh, I might, this might be a contract job and I can lock in my GL prefix that, and I can lock in project manager. So this information is going to be set up uh, over on the job in job cost for me along with some of the other static information. So I can say okay to that. Now notice that the create job is now checkmarked, but it's grayed out. So again, I'll save, and then I'm going to close. So let me come back over here to job cost and go back into set up jobs. And we'll now see that my class job is now there. So when I pull this in, notice here that this the information, the address information, the phone number, the type came over, the job size came over, the status came over as unstarted, the dates came over. It only brought over the billing method. I'm going to have to come in and fill in the AR customer and the tax group. This information did not, there aren't fields for this um, over in project management, so it didn't come in. Under scope and PR, it did bring over the scope of work. Under AP and GL, it did bring over the GL prefix. So that's going from project management to job cost. Now, if I go the other way, 
I say I'm going to create a new job here, and it's 19002. I'm going to go ahead and create it here. I'm going to say this is a class job two. Address information here. And we'll say the type is class again. This has a job size of 1,000, maybe. Okay, and I'll put a phone number in here. Okay. And maybe this job is actually in progress, so I'm going to change this. And I'm going to enter a, a date here of today, and we're going to complete it today. And let's see. We'll say it's that. We'll say this is, again, test job to PJ. And I've got to get that information in there. Okay. All right, now I'm going to save. And now if I come back into PJ and I go back to whoops, not PJ. Where are you? Set up job. And I do a find here. Look at what's there. So this job has been created in job cost, and it's already marked send to, send to accounting because it was actually created in accounting. Uh, it, I've got the description, I've got the type, the size, the dates, the address information came across. So all I need to do, here's my test stuff, is go ahead and complete the, con uh, the contact information on this window set up any spec sections, scope, and that. Okay. So going from job cost to PJ is automatic. But going from PJ to job cost is not. You have to use this, this release to accounting or create JC job. Now, there is another uh, thing we can do here. So you could have jobs that have... Um, Maybe you've got a 900 section, and these are pre-jobs, pre okay? And so you've got information in here. You've got stuff filled out on all of these screens, okay. and you're, you're tracking the documents inside <clears throat> project management. But this job has not, is not actually active yet. You haven't, you haven't won it, um, but you, may, you might have some either some costs that have to come through, um, preliminary stuff, or you want to put the estimate in, you have to set this up in job cost or send it to job cost in order for that to happen. Now, maybe this job number is not the number that you want it to have once it gets to job cost. So what you're going to do save this here, is you're going to use this button right here that says renumber job, and it's going to allow you to change this job number before you send it over to job cost. It's going to change this job number on all the documents that you've created inside project management. And then now I can say, go ahead and create the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Save, save, save. And I can change the name. Put in the address. I can change the billing method. I can put uh, my GL prefix in and I can OK that. And now that has been, been saved, and it's been sent over to job cost. So now if I go to set up jobs and do my list, my new job number is there. Okay. So I think um, that gives you a good view 
or, or vi vision of what the different types of fields are within project management versus job costs. So inside job costs, that's where you're going to find all of the accumulated totals for the estimate, the costs, the billings, the commitments. You won't see any of those dollar amounts inside project management itself. However, SAGE has provided a lot of reports that you can use that pull those two things together. So you can report on uh, things from inside project management along with information from the yep. job cost module. All right, so <clears throat> that's going to do it for, our t for today's class on the actual PJ setup area. So you're going to go through the settings. Oops. That's not what I wanted. What previous here. You're going to go through settings, make sure that those are set the way that you want. You're going to make sure that you've got your own company and all the individuals that are going to be uh, need that need to be contacted for within a within a project. You're going to use address book to set up your company and all those individuals and then you can go through project management and you can pull up the projects that are already ongoing and you can add uh, contacts to them or set up distribution lists on them. Uh, and just remember, anything that you change, any of those uh, fields that are shared between PJ and, and uh, project management, when you change it in one module, it actually updates the other module. So if you have an address change or a phone number change, you don't have to go to both places to do it. Those, those jobs are connected within the software. Okay. Um, and then one, once you have all that pulled together, then you're going to be ready uh, for our next session next week to go through all of the documents that are available um, in, in project management. And we'll use the jobs that we set up today um, to demonstrate some of those documents and how to use, especially how to use the contacts, the job contacts and the distribution list. All right, so we have a few, uh, a couple of minutes left um, in our, our hour today. So if you have any questions, uh, if you want to go ahead and put those in the chat area on the webinar panel, then uh, Tina can read those out to me and I can answer you now. Or if you want to think about it um, and just email Tina, she can forward those to me and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Also, if there's, any, you know, if, if there's anything in the software that we reviewed today that you would like me to go back and, and pull back up on the screen, I'd be happy to do that now as well. Oh, there aren't, doesn't appear to be any questions. OK. All right. Um, OK, why don't you go ahead and, and stop the session. And then for those of you um, that are still um, connected with us, if you think of anything in the, uh, you know, later on, just let us know. Or if you're joining us next week, next Tuesday, uh, same time, we're going to be going through the documents. Uh, I'll be happy to answer your questions then, too. Otherwise, uh, have a great rest of your day, and I will see you next week. <laughs>